is up, guys. Welcome to the Think Computers Weekly Tech Podcast. This is episode 248, and our podcast is brought to you by Amazon. If you go to thinkcomputers.org forward slash Amazon and happen to purchase something, give us a little kickback and uh, keeps the podcast on going. With me is my co-host, Ryan. What's going on? Oh, not much. Just like reacting to all the news about, obviously, we're going to talk about some things today, but just like mixed feelings about launches today. So Really? Yeah. Okay. I, I I've read a couple of reviews. I've it yeah. seems seem, things seem to be good. Um, products are, products I think are good. Availability not so good. Yeah, maybe. yeah. It's kind I, of one of my feelings. I, I wrote a story on that, so we'll oh. we'll definitely talk about that. Maybe we should talk. Um, about it, yeah. If you guys kind of were listening last week, we had an interview last week. Um, so yeah. we're going back to our normal format, which is we talk about tech news, we talk about our reviews. Um, so our podcast usually lasts around an hour. So like I said, I always try to say, grab a drink, grab some snacks or some food and just hang out and talk tech with us. If you want to check out that interview, I think we got some really good feedback on it. A lot of people really liked it and we'll definitely do those in the future. Um, we have to obviously schedule with different people who live in different, uh, you going to say areas. who it was. Oh, I will. Yes. It was, uh, Shannon Rob, who's one of our good friends. Worked for Thermal Take. He now works for Be Quiet. Um, he's been in the industry a long time. So mm-hmm. definitely check that interview out. It's the last podcast before this one. A lot of good insight into a lot of a lot of Yeah. Topics, we talked about some really cool stuff. We talked about how he cases got cases and case yeah. design. Sorry, I'm talking all over you tonight. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you're good. Yeah. No, wow. how he got into into tech, you know, in the industry. Um, some of the products he's, you know, helped design and just the thought and process that goes into all of that. Uh, no, it was really good insight. Yeah. And it was really interesting, especially when he was talking about cases, like what makes a company decide to do one thing over another or how they go about choosing, you know, if we're going to bring out a new color, how that process is thought out. So it's a really cool interview. So definitely check that out. Um, but uh, if you are following along, of course, this week, you want to bring up our show notes, um, which are linked in the description of this video. So you can follow along. It has everything that we're going to be talking about this week. And we'll jump right into reviews. And this week we do have it is a launch. It's not the launch that I'm sure a lot of people have expected, uh, but it's this little keyboard Right here, look how small this is. I know it's tiny. You were picking it up, and I'm like, "Wait a sec." Yeah, that's, this is. Small. I mean, I know it's not a full size keyboard, but it always just gets me how small they are. Yeah, so this is the HyperX Ducky One Two Mini, and if you're not familiar with Ducky, if you're not like big into mechanical keyboards, you probably haven't heard of Ducky. But they make some really awesome. I would say like enthusiast grade keyboards. They're not specifically gaming keyboards there's like no. like HyperX is a gaming brand we know them for gaming i have a gaming headset on made by them they make gaming keyboards they make gaming mice ducky on the other hand they make keyboards for people who want key- like a comfortable keyboard i don't know how how do, yeah. how do you describe like, like the what a mechanical, mechanical keyboard enthusiast market? i think like yeah maybe co- you, you mentioned comfort but just like customization right i want a certain feel to my keys maybe even yeah. a certain sound i want a certain not not just the tactile feel like how it, the key presses feel but the type of plastics that are used in my keys mm-hmm. the sounds again the materials that the 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 frame is made out of just the lighting the everything yeah yeah i would say that like i said ducky is is that type of brand and hyperx is a gaming brand and they've come together to create this keyboard and this is actually the second run of this keyboard. So they actually collabed back in, I believe it was May, and they came out with like the first run of the HyperX Ducky 1-2 Mini. This is the second run, which has a custom colorway, which is all black. As you can see, it's all black. The other one was black and red. Um, and the, the cool thing is, is that you get the Ducky 1-2 Mini, which is a keyboard that Ducky sells all by itself. But with this version, it will come with HyperX's own mechanical key switches, which you could not find in any other keyboards besides HyperX keyboards, and of course, this one. And the thing that's great about these key switches, they're a red key switch. They're meant to um, mimic a Cherry MX Red, and of course, that's known as a gaming switch. Um, And the cool thing about them is they have a shorter actuation point as well as a shorter travel distance. So... um, 
I believe it's 1.8 millimeters for the actuation point and 3.8 millimeters for the full travel distance, which means they're a faster switch than a Cherry MX Red. They're also rated for 80 million clicks. So a Cherry MX Red is rated for 50 million. So I wouldn't necessarily call them a better switch, but they're rated to last longer, which is a good thing. Um, another cool thing, I'll actually bring the review up because I don't, I, the, one of my favorite parts about this keyboard I don't actually have on it um, is the custom uh, space bar. So you get a cut. That is a, cool. Yeah, I like that. A couple custom, um, bring this up. You get like this cool custom space bar. There are actually some extras as well that you get with this. Um, and while I have this up here, this keyboard is a 60% keyboard. So it's very, very small. Um, a lot of people are familiar with like a full size, a 10 keyless, but 60% goes even smaller. Um, and in my opinion, 60% is the lowest you can go without really losing a ton. You're still going to lose mm -hmm. some keys on this because obviously you're cutting um, the size down. But what's nice about the 60% is the size of the keycaps don't change. So yep. all of your keycaps are the standard size that you would see in a full size keyboard. So you don't feel cramped. So moving from a larger keyboard to this keyboard, the, uh, uh, what do you call it? Like the time to get used to it or the time to get acclimated to the keyboard is like no time at all, which is really nice. Um, and yeah, the big I mean, it has, thing a, it's like, it's a standard key layout, right? I mean, so, yeah the placement of your hands and everything, like you said, you don't have to get used to a new layout. Uh, that's what's always kind of scared me away from some of these smaller keyboards, right? Where they shrink them and they change the size or even the pos position of some keys. Yeah. And that's like shied me away from like going in and spending, you know, possibly a couple hundred dollars on, on a nice keyboard. Yeah. So you do the things that I notice the most about the 60% layout is that you have no arrow keys. I actually use my arrow keys quite a lot. Um, especially when I'm in like in Premiere, going like frame by frame to edit video, things like that. And the function row, uh, the dedicated function row, as you can see, there's no dedicated function row. But as you can see in this picture, the fronts of the keycaps have legends for alternate functions. So you just hit that function key, hold that down, and you do get a lot of the functions back. Um, so you're not like completely gimped if you need to use some of those things. Um, so like I said, I, I really do like the 60% form factor. Another thing that this keyboard has is PBT keycaps. So if you're used to gaming keyboards, most of them will ship with an ABS keycap. A PBT keycap is a better quality keycap. It feels better. It feels strong. It feels sturdy. And the most important thing is that you don't get that shine on the keycaps. So I'm sure... A lot of you, you you know, you have that piece of pizza <laughs> and then you go to back to gaming and then the next day your keyboard is just disgusting. Or even just from use, you see that shine on your keycaps. That doesn't happen with PBD keycaps. So that, that not only helps with the comfort of the keyboard and how it feels, but it also makes it so you don't have to clean your keyboard as much, um, which is a really good thing as well. As far as the whole chassis of this keyboard, um, it is plastic, but it's solid. Like it feels good. Uh, when you hear plastic chassis on some of these keyboards, you're like, oh, it's crap, right? But this thing feels like a brick. Like you could hit somebody with this. Like it's a weapon. Like it how's feels... it with like fingerprints? Because that top so, edge there is like yeah. super glossy plastic. Yeah. So the front edge is not glossy. The back is yeah, very that, glossy. Yeah, that top and edge. You can see my fingerprints on it. Yeah. Um, it is a fingerprint magnet. So that's something to obviously think about. Obviously, you're not going to see that. You might see that the top edge you'll probably see, um, but the bottom edge you won't. So um, in any case, this is a solid keyboard. So that's really what I wanted to point out was just how solid this keyboard is. Um, and then, I, like I said, I used it for a while. I actually just switched back to my other keyboard because I've been doing video editing. I, I like having... Uh, arrows and I like a number pad for doing a lot of stuff in Excel that I do. So I would probably use this keyboard if I had those extra things. I actually might even consider getting like one of those, I think Cooler Master makes those one as like number pads that you can configure. Mm -hmm. 
and just use this as like my typing keyboard and my gaming keyboard because it's that comfortable. Like I really, really like this thing. Um, and it's just, it's just an awesome keyboard. It's super comfortable. I played Apex Legends with it. I might actually use it tonight to play. Apex. Oh boy, it's, there we go. Actually, because it's 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 really he's that setting himself up for for poor play later tonight. He's like, ah, oh, it's just gotta be this keyboard. No, but in, in any case, it's it's one of the most com- like out of all the keyboards that I reviewed this year, it's in the top three as far as comfort. Nice, it's that comfortable, and that's the biggest thing because. You can have all this bling and all this junk all over your keyboard, but you're using it to type and you're using it to game and it needs to be comfortable. You're, you know, you're typing or gaming for hours. The most important thing, in my opinion, is comfort. So this feels extremely comfortable. This does have per key RGB backlighting, which I was showing you. Um, I can bring it up again. The bummer about the RGB lighting as well is if you are a gamer and you want to do the, um, you want to do macros or anything like that, you have to do it on the keyboard itself. Ooh. Now, this is for a lot of these like uh enthusiast brand keyboards, that is pretty normal. But for mm-hmm. us who are used to gaming keyboards, HyperX does have their own software. It's not compatible with this keyboard. You know, all the other companies have have software where we can go in and we can visually see our RGB lighting, we can visually make our macros. You don't get that with this keyboard, which is a little bit that disappointing. Stinks. Um uh, you can't with you know with the keyboard you can actually create macros you can do all that stuff but it's just more cumbersome and I'm I'm not a fan of that. Um, but I think at that and again again that, that stuff doesn't matter all that much. Um, and if you have certain motherboards, uh, especially like an MSI motherboard, they have a macro program. I don't even you might even can just download it, but there are programs to to make macros for your keyboard if you you know, want to do that, but it doesn't come with it. Um, but overall, like I said, one of the most comfortable keyboards. Now this is completely sold out. So you can't buy this one. The HyperX one, you cannot buy it. It, it uh, went on sale today and they had a limited run of 6,500 units and it's gone. So you can't get it, oh. but you can buy the ducky version and the ducky version you can get with cherry MX um, kale and gather on switches. So you have a bunch of different switch options. If you're looking for a good keyboard, a keyboard great for coding, great for typing, great for gaming, very small, so you do miss some things, but I would really, really, re- like, I would really recommend this keyboard. I didn't think it was going to be as good as it was, and it, it really was just that good. So check out my review. I also did a video on this. If you guys want to check that out, it's uh, embedded in the review. But honestly, really, really impressed. And this, like, makes me wonder how good the other ducky keyboards are um, because I'm, I'm very, very impressed with this. And again, I review a lot of keyboards. It's not often I get like super impressed. And again, looking at this, it just like looks like a normal little <laughs> keyboard, but it's, it's very, very impressive. So again, check out the review. Um, it is linked in the show notes. And then because we had uh, Shannon on last week, we, skipped like all of our reviews from last week but one i definitely wanted to talk about was the uh fractal design meshify 2 um which i was incredibly impressed with uh real quick in the chat i'm not looking at chat again i do that i'm not a good last there yeah kosher tech is in the uh channel or in the chat so what's up to him um so the meshify 2 is basically a reimagining of their original Meshify. So we see it so often that the cases that we have, they look pretty and they have these RG, the, the <laughs> RGB lighting, but when it comes to performance, they're not great. Yeah. Um, the case that I have sitting beside me, I have the side panel off because it's a glass side panel and I have a 3090 and it just, yeah. It's getting so, a little warm. Yeah, it gets a little warm in there and I it has three glass panels on it. So it's like, Fractal, there's a few other companies besides Fractal that do have high airflow or high performance cases. The cool thing about the uh, Meshify 2 it, or the Meshify in general, and the, I think that Fractal was the one that really, they, they made the mesh look cool, right? Yep. So the front mesh has this sort of like... Fractal design to it. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah, it does. I mean, that's what it is. So they they just made it look cool. 
Um, I don't think my pictures do it justice, but that one does there. Yeah. Yeah. You can see it. Like it just looks different. It looks very cool. Um, but the whole idea with mesh is that you get high airflow into the case because if you have a tempered glass panel, you typically only get ventilation on the top and on the sides. And it's not a lot. And it's, if you're running some pretty intense hardware, you're doing overclocking, your cooling is not going to be that great. So they, that's the whole idea behind the Meshify series. Now, with the Meshify 2, the big thing is they've completely redone the inside of the case. And if you know Fractal, you know that their whole thing is ease of use for the builder and to make things useful. I think they're one of the companies that make uh, their cases useful. So we did, we reviewed the Define 7 earlier this year. Was that this year or was that last year? Yeah, I think so. It was, a, it was this year. Uh, earlier in the year because it's before I moved here. So probably like January, February. Um, but in that case, it had a completely modular internal layout. And you could configure it as like a normal system with a couple hard drives. Or you could, could configure it as a very high storage uh, system, which a lot of people are looking for. And... Having high airflow means that all, you know, it's designed for big hard drives, like eight, 10 terabyte hard drives that you could put a bunch in there. They're going to get, get airflow across them. Yeah, you need airflow across them. So they've taken that internal design and they've brought it over to the Meshify series. Um, and I'll show you what I mean. The, and really, the Define case is pretty big because I have like the R6 sitting. Yeah ways over and like looking at it it's, it's a decent sized case it's not super tall or anything but there's so much room in there and i'm glad that they've brought over some of those features from the define series yeah so what they've done so here's the internal layout like in the default layout this is what it looks like mm -hmm. as you can see it's like your typical case layout you have a main compartment here for your uh motherboard graphics card all of that and then you have a power supply cover and power supply goes in there now you can actually switch this up. So what's cool about it is that you can switch it up and you could make it look like this, where one, you have this uh, cover that covers all of your hard drives that you can install. So on the back side, you can see that we basically moved this panel over and they include four hard drive trays that you can put here. You can actually add five more which is pretty impressive. So I think the, to I don't even know the total number of hard drives, but I think it's like 15 you can put in this case wow. um, by buying extra trays. I think out of the box, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight or nine hard drives out of the box um, because you actually have another. There's uh, some down below. Okay. Yeah, there's some down below as well. So just that in itself, and they include the trays, they include all the, you know, they include, uh, the ability to do that without having to buy extra parts. I think that is just, that's awesome. Um, being yeah, that the cable management is really nice too. Yeah. The cable management is really like great. Those brackets so, and grommets. You have one, you have the grommets. We talked about that uh, a couple of weeks yep. ago in the in one case uh, that had none of these. You have that, you have the cable routing channels, which work great. Um, you have the Velcro ties uh, I believe there's a total of 17 tie down points on the motherboard tray as well. So you have a ton uh, that you can tie down. Um, and it's like I said, it's just really good. And then you have this, they started doing this again on the Define series as well um, with this little, it's like a plastic insert that just hides everything down there. Even though this back panel is a plain panel, it still hides everything, which is really cool. Um, Kosher asked how much the case is. I believe it's 139. It's not expensive for everything that you get, in my opinion. Uh, let's see. 120 or 139.99 for, for the, the tempered deep, glass. For the tempered glass version. And then they have a, a one that has a plane panel, which is 129. I think for that, like it's one 140 bucks. Um, obviously it brings you above that um that like a hundred dollar. Yeah. One, you're not like entry level. You're not top yeah. of the line. You're lower mid range, I think. Yeah. And then the Maybe. thing you have to think is 
Uh, <laughs> Kosher said that Scandinavian design ain't cheap. Well, the thing is, is too, is that everything in this case is metal. Um, you see it on so many other cases. Those hard drive trays would be plastic. plastic the, yeah. the hard drive trays that are on the back side of the motherboard, um, those would be plastic. Everything in here is metal and it's very high quality metal. The only part of the case that is not metal is the front panel. Um, but they've done some really cool stuff too. So talking about the front panel, um, one thing that's really cool is access to things. So one, the actual mesh part is a door that opens up so you can access your fans and do all can of you that. that if you want. Oh yeah. I don't have it up. I'm right, awesome. Cool. streaming. I'm really good at this. <laughs> um, so you have, yeah. So you have this door here that allows you to, you know, have access to the fans. Move it does come with 40s. Yeah. It does come with three fans as well. Two in the front, one in the back. Um, but it gives you access there. And then um, you can actually take the entire front panel off of the case. It just, it literally just pulls off. Um, and with that, you can take, there's a filter that you can just boop and pull right off. Um, it's like, everything is thought out in this case. It just makes it easy for the user. Um, so, it, and then there's another, um, there's another filter that, that goes across the entire bottom length of the case as well. So again, everything on here is completely thought out. It's uh, it's real steel, as uh, Kosher Tech said. Yeah, it's it's very high quality steel. Everything, like I said, um, even the top panel too. So the top panel, it is a solid panel. This is not a, a insert or anything that's actually part of the panel, the ventilation. And then okay. when you take take it off, it just again it just pulls off. You have another filter, um, and then you have your cooling mount up top. Which again, this cooling mount can be completely so removed. Nice from the case if you want. It has a fill port if you're doing water cooling. Like everything, again, is completely thought out on this case. It's it's all done very, very well. It's, yeah. I, I Like I said, it's- You get spoiled it, when you build in these cases from Fractal. Yes. Like, you, and then you go back to some other case or just switch brands or something and you're like, man, I, what do you mean this case doesn't have this, that, or the other, right? And then another thing that I didn't, uh, that I, I didn't really illustrate that great in the written review, uh, of this is the side panels. So we all know one, how ugly side panel windows can be or tempered glass windows can be when they have like screws here, right? Like yep. sometimes it just looks bad. Secondly, they're extremely hard to take off and not get fingerprints on them, right? Um, it just mm -hmm. happens, right? So what uh, Fractal has done is that you have these little, they're just like little knobs and you just like, press them over with your thumb and it releases the panel and you can just pick it up from the top and bottom. So you don't have to touch the panel. It's on cool. both. It's on both sides of the case, not just the tempered glass side. It just, again, you're right, Ryan, like we're spoiled when you build these cases yeah. because they're just, they're I mean, really it's got just, a, And like the way they laid out the fan controller, right along the top, you've got the, like, I think. Oh eight. yeah. Yeah. Again, I'm, I'm just missing. Headers on here. Yeah. I'm just missing. Well, things. there's so, so much, there's so many little features here. It's, yeah, it's, and again, cool. you think of you think of that 140 bucks. Um, so there is a fan controller that's right here. One, so when Fractal was one of the first ones that started doing this, mm -hmm. typically, and again, in a lot it's of like cases, just in the middle of the thing. I hate that. Yeah, Kosher just reviewed a case that where the controller, the fan controller is right here. And again, when like we first started doing this, uh, Fractal did it too. You you put yeah. it right in the center. Um, because it's centrally located. But the problem is you had all these cables going here and you could see what kind of cable mess that would create. Instead, they put it up top right here and it allows you to easily route your cables without having a big mess in the center part of your back, uh, of the back of the motherboard tray. It's so much easier. And again, it's just like one of those things that's like fractile. You, like you're just making life so much easier for the builder, which I love. Um, also, a thing I didn't mention too, if anybody thinking about doing water cooling, this is their multi-bracket right here. So this allows you to mount a pump or a reservoir um, anywhere where this can be mounted in the case. And this can be mounted, um, there's a lot of different mounting places in the case, but it can also be mounted on any of the fan mounts as well. Um, but if you don't want to use it for that use, it also can mount hard drives on it. 
too. So that's another hard drive tray that you get included. Huh. So there's just like so much in this case that it's like, if you review a case like this and then you review something else, you're like, it's like night and day. Right. You know what I mean? mean? There's Velcro straps there, right? That are, that come with it. And the little plastic channels that they're attached to, to help you route yeah. the cables and straight lines and stuff. It's so handy. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's very well done. I honestly, with, with, you're getting basically the same internal layout almost as at the mm -hmm. Fine 7, which is, I think that's $200, right? Yeah. Uh, and you're getting a high airflow. You're getting three fans that are included. You're getting all those extras that we talk about. I think $140 is more than like, and the, the quality, we always know Fractal for great quality. Uh, I gave it a nine out of 10. Um, the only downsides, um, I did say that if you aren't using that high storage layout, there is a lot of dead space. Um, if you look at our build, you can actually see the dead space that I'm talking about. Uh, oh, wait, those temperatures. Temperatures and noise levels are really good as well. But when you're using mesh, the noise is going to be a little bit louder. But if you look at our build here, this is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about dead space. Yeah. Um, this well, and we've seen like the O11 dynamic, right, where they've put fans there instead um, yeah. on the side. But really, that's pretty common of... Well, any case, right? It's just a longer case. Yeah. So one, this case is going to give you the ability to do either storage layout or this normal layout. Mm -hmm. And if I was doing water cooling, it would probably be right here because in the extra space in the case. But if you know you're doing this smaller layout, I would expect Fractal to come out with a Meshify S or, or Meshify C. Mini or, or yeah, yeah, they they did it. They did it with the Define series. They did it with the the original Meshify series as well. So I expect they'll come out with a, you know, where it kind of cuts the case right here. When, mm -hmm. So you know you're not doing that. Because again, this space is fine, but it's just, in my opinion, it's just dead space. Um, but if you're doing the high storage layout, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't be doing that either. Um, and I forget the other downside to this case. Um, yeah, the fans are a little bit louder because of the mesh. That's expected. It's not going to be as quiet as a case that has tempered glass it just you know but they're not like overly loud or anything like that so again another great product definitely worth cool. uh checking out be if you're doing a new build um that's that's yeah, just an awesome case and then we move over to paul's review uh which i'm kind of jealous that he got to review these because um <laughs> creative has been we you were with me when we did the demo Right yeah, now, the creative demo. So does the usher. The Super X5 technology from Creative, it basically maps your ears. You can do it like with your phone or maps your head. I don't know how it actually works. Um, but it it creates like a 3D sound stage that you can effectively use with headphones, even with earbuds now. And they've been this technology is is absolutely amazing. And they um they've inc started incorporating this super X5 technology into a lot of their products. And the latest one is a gaming headset. So this is the creative, would you say an S X F I or is that how you would say it? S X I I don't know. S X I I'm no, not sure. I, I feel like it could be either, but in any case, that's, <laughs> that's the product name. Um, and it's a gaming headset. And, um, Paul has reviewed quite a lot of gaming headsets and he was absolutely blown away by this headset. It it's just that good. Um, using that, uh, super X5 technology. He said it was great for gaming. It's also like, in my opinion, it's really great for movies, um, because it makes you feel like you're in, it, it, it almost makes it feel like you don't have headphones on in my opinion. Like that's kind of how I, well, that's what, well, again, that's what we kind of thought in that that demo, right? Was yeah. like, the sound's got to be coming from outside these headphones because it sounds, that's what it sounded like. It sounded like things were not inside your head like typical headphones yeah. do. So, um, but Yeah, so it, that like that's that's a great thing about this technology. But overall, it's a gaming headset. It's a very solid, feels really good. Um, as you can see, it's the the frame is made of metal, which is obviously really good. Um, and one thing that's really cool about this headset that he said is that 
Um, it connects type C to your computer, but he just like tet just like his phone has type C and he just connected it and it worked via type C on his phone, okay. which is really cool. Um, and he could use a lot of the creative effects because there's a, an app for his phone uh, from creative. So you could essentially, because a lot of times with, with creative products, uh, you have to use their app to enable a lot of these really cool features or a lot of sure. the sound features. He can do that on his phone now, which is pretty, pretty awful. Cool. Um, well, yeah, like he, if you're traveling and like watching a movie with it and get that yeah. extra surround sound feature out of them. Uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, so um, it has a detachable mic, of course, because it's a gaming headset. He tested that. We have the audio samples. Um, you can check that out in the review. But he was absolutely blown away, um, and he gave it a full 10 out of 10. Wow. Um, you know, it just, he just, it just checked all the boxes for him. So definitely check out that review. Um, Creative, again, we mainly know full. I mean, they do make a ton of different headsets, but... We mainly know them for their gra or not graphics cards for their sound cards, <laughs> yep. but they might be make making a pretty good name for themselves in a gaming headset. If again, if this is like I said, if, so can, as good as Paul you know, does, release it is, another product and keep it up. Yeah, yeah. So definitely check out that review again. The link is in the show notes, um, and we'll go to uh, Case Mod Friday for this week. And we have uh, talking about EK. We were talking about EK. Oh, we we're talking oh. about EK pre-show. We were talking about them pre-show. Yeah. Um, yeah, about the in Vegas. Oh yeah, yeah. So we have a build this week from AK Mod, who does excellent, excellent uh, builds. He has uh, this one is called Carbon EK X Edition. It's done inside this really interesting case by Azza of all people, um, and basically he's given it the carbon fiber treatment. This as a case is actually made to open like this. This isn't a part of the mod. Um, the case is made to open like this, which is pretty interesting. Um, but you can see it's just like all carbon fiber. Um, even the, how would you, can you buy tubing like this with the carbon fiber? I'm sure that the, I know I've seen like carbon tubing. That's like that for like, Oh, like walking sticks, like super light walking sticks. And yeah. I've seen it in a couple other applications. Now, if it's, whether that's like actual tubing made for this. I don't know that I've ever seen water cooling tubing for this. I don't think you would. I don't know. Maybe they, somebody does make it. I don't know. Or that or could like be like just you, some wrap, right? Yeah, that's like what I'm a, saying. A vinyl. Or, or do you, yeah, do you think it was wrapped? But I actually really like it. I don't think I've seen the carbon. Uh, I'm not a fan of it on the. Um, I don't like how the texture looks on the rounded surface. Um, I think it's too tight. I do. I don't mind it on the, the bigger surfaces. Yeah. Right, I like that carbon fiber look. It just looks a little odd on the, the tubes. But no, overall, I I do think this is pretty sweet. Yeah, it's it's a really really cool build. Um, it is, oh that is it that is the uh, the MSI carbon board Z four ninety carbon, uh, which I actually reviewed, and it does have the carbon fiber accents as well. Uh, it's just like I I really like this build because I mean here's what the case like normally looks like. Um, and he put, you know, he, he wrapped it in carbon fiber, obviously, but I, I just think that it's, it's a little different. I like that. It, like he opens it up and puts it kind of like in On this format. Side, yeah. I think that looks really cool. Um, so yeah, definitely, uh, check this one out. Big shout out to AK mod for that one. Um, I, you know, it's coming to the end of the year. We're going to be, have to do our, uh, our top favorite stuff of the, yeah. yeah top case mods. We there's are. a lot. There's been a lot of really good case mods this year. I think, at least the past couple of years, like the talent has just been. I know I've got a couple of favorites for sure. Yeah, there's been some really good ones. So definitely uh, stay tuned for that. And now on to contest. So we're, we announced a new contest today, but there's still like a day left. I think. Uh, let's see. On our previous contest. Yeah. Oh, so there's two days left. So if you're listening to this on audio, you still might have a chance. Uh, we are giving away a Corsair K100 RGB gaming keyboard. This is an awesome keyboard from Corsair. It's a full-size keyboard. It's the most RGBs they've ever put in a keyboard. It has their awesome new processor, all that stuff. Um, two days left, just like all of our contests. We do them through Gleam, so easy to enter, super easy. So we have that one, and then we also have... Uh, 
wait, did I put it in this? Oh, there it is. Yeah, so we're doing a holiday contest with Patriot. So we know Patriot for their memory, their SSDs. Um, they're sending us, or they're giving us uh, one of each to give away. So we are giving away uh, one of their VPN 100, 512 gigabyte NVMe SSDs, as well as a 16 gigabyte kit of their Viper Steel memory. This is non-RGB memory. So if you're a fan of non-RGB, uh, this is some awesome memory. And there's in there, it's the 4,400 megahertz kit, uh, nice. which which is like, will probably only work on like an X570 or a Z490 motherboard. Uh, so keep that in mind. But uh, the VPN100 is an awesome Gen 3 NVMe SSD. And of course, we reviewed the uh, Viper Steel memory and it's great as well. So again, same thing, just on Gleam. You go down here, you put in your name and your email, and then there's uh, 13 other ways to enter. This one's going to run till the middle of December. So you'll, if you're a winner, you'll get this stuff like just in time for Christmas, which would be perfect. Um, so get your entries in on those two. If you guys want to find these on the site, um, you just click on contest up here. Or uh, if you are in the show notes, the links are in the show notes for these. So, so yeah, get in on cool. all of that. And news that brings time. us to the news. To uh, um, So uh, Valero, who's in the chat, he said, uh, I hope the new AMD Radeon 6000 series doesn't have any, I guess, I think he means any issues. Um, also, Old Man's in the chat. Derek Moore's in the chat. Thanks for stopping in, guys. You guys are like a regulars and koshers here. Uh, as you need to well. give me like this highlighting uh, ability so I can call them out. Can you not ten minutes later? Yeah, I'm I'm, just, I wish like, I could. I wish there was a way, like, like so we use or something, you know? Yeah, so we use a streaming um, streamyard website or app called Streamyard, and it allows me to like highlight, you know, like I can highlight people's things. Um, but usually, I'm talking about stuff, and then Ryan mm -hmm. sees it. Um, and this thing that allows me to highlight is a little delayed from when it. Like when you guys actually type it in the chat, how much do you think the delay is? A couple minutes? It's no, it's not that much because I I have like the YouTube chat open in a separate window okay. and I monitor it in Streamyard. It's it's really not too much of a delay. Yeah. So you can, you can't click. I wonder. I don't nope. know. But it needs like Streamyard's great because it allows us to do this and allows me to you know bring up our uh, you know stuff into different windows, but it's not as robust as we would like it to be. If that makes sense. Um, yep. But anyway, back to news. So the uh, RX 6800 series launched officially today. Um, we didn't get one into review, so I can't say on my personal experience for testing. There mm -hmm. are a ton of reviews out there. Um, I've read five or six of them. It seems like a good card. Yeah. It seems like it's, it, it's one of those things. And again, AMD needed to do this is where they compete. It, it it competes against the 3080. It trades blows between different games depending on the game. Yep, we all know this. We all know that certain games are better optimized for NVIDIA. Other games are better optimized for AMD. So it, I think it, at the end of the day, for the most part, it's going to come down to what game you want to play. And then you have drivers. You have also ray tracing. So it seems that at least right now, nvidia cards are better at ray tracing sure. so and there's more games um that nvidia cards support as far as ray tracing uh, so if ray tracing is a big thing you want to go the nvidia route on the other hand uh if like, you don't care about it and your game will perform better on an amd then go the amd route um i'm impressed i, I don't know what you what you think about it so i didn't get to get to read any reviews today um i was just too busy at work, um, but I did watch part of like Jay's Two Senses video, and the part that I liked, he called out, or at least kind of went over on this. His testing was that they did it on an Intel system, um, just to kind of you know not take advantage of those uh, extra AMD um, the memory access right to give them an yeah. advantage. They'll obviously he's going to do a, a follow up where they do that on an AMD system, um, but no, I, I I thought the like you said it kind of trades blows, goes back and forth depending on the title. Um, no, I think it's, uh, a, finally a competitor to what I would consider high end graphics, um, yeah. competing against NVIDIA. So, um, I don't feel like we've had that for 
ever it feels like right and it is uh what's the price on it i wrote it in this article that i wrote uh it is 650 649 yeah and the price difference like between it and the nvidia um the 3080 isn't like there's not a huge gap but it's still a little cheaper Um, yeah um okay now i'm looking at the chat uh kayla is here Mm-hmm. And she tells she me says, pop, pop your collar, pop my collar. Uh, yeah. Um, and also so, Uncle Sam said, what if you swap AMD for the HRP gaming? What's an HRP gaming? Uh, I don't know. I don't know what that means. Uh, Uncle Sam, if you want to clarify. Um, and yeah. So the big thing, um, again, we can't, I can't like go into detail on performance because again, I didn't test them, but it's, same or equal level to like a 3080, uh, which is really good. And as Ryan said, we haven't had AMD compete at that level. We haven't. Um, so that is a big deal, I think. And it allows, just like we talk about with Intel and AMD on the CPU side, it allows you as the consumer to have a choice. Say, okay, I want a game at 4K. I can choose an NVIDIA card or an AMD card, depending on my title, or right. I just ha- I have the choice. But sadly, uh, as Kosher said, uh, they're all sold out. And they really are. Um, I looked this morning on every website, because I was just going to buy one to review, and they're sold out everywhere. Um, just like how NVIDIA cards were sold out everywhere, and continue to be sold out everywhere. Um, they're legit sold out. Like, here's a screenshot that I took when I was writing this article from uh new egg everything sold out um and if you go on ebay which of course everybody's scalping these that's the big thing we have bots buying them we have scalpers um you know buying one uh look at this people are putting them brand new card for three thousand dollars when it's a 650 dollar card (laughs) this one's 1500 uh Uh, you know this one's 1600 and there's a ton of them um that are up on ebay already it's you did send me a link to a, a card that was available though that looked you know was pretty <laughs> well yeah, was people, it like the 6800 sad edition or something yeah and then there's a there are people are ebaying like a, a, pa- a paper edition of the card which is a piece of paper with the card drawn on it yeah um so yeah it's the and again i don't know if this is just like a new thing now because we we saw it with the nvidia launch for the RTX 30 series. We also saw it with Xbox and PlayStation. Same thing. Um, and now, yeah, thinking- I mean, they just launched and, you know, people are complaining on social media. Can't get those either. And we are seeing it now here with the uh, 6800 series. Now, obviously, what's going on in the world, I can see there being supply issues. I can see there being uh, those type of issues. I can also see that all these new cards use GD- GDDR6. There's not a whole, I mean, there is a lot of it out there, but there's not like loads what's of the, it out there. What's the new iPhone though? iPhone 12? Yeah. Right. So what is it? Does it use GDDR6? I have no, or no, no, it's not going to. I just, I feel like you didn't have to like struggle to get your iPhone, right? You got it like the day it, it launched. I just have a, a have trouble like, no, I had to, I had to wait with... to get my iPhone. How quickly did you get it? Like a week later. Okay. Can you say the same thing for like the 30 series of video cards? No. 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 See, I, I don't and, know. Yeah, I don't. And the, the problem that I have in it, if you guys want to read, I wrote like a little article up, not an article, but I guess a little article up about how bad this is for the industry as a whole. Mm-hmm. So a lot of my friends... Um, Again, with everything going on, people are working from home and people are at home a lot. And a lot of my friends are like, well, since I'm working from home, I'm just going to, I haven't, I've had this laptop, but like, I want a PC now. I'm just going to build a new PC. What should I get? And I tell them, you want like a high end PC? And they're like, yeah, I'm like, it's a horrible time to do it because like my buddy was doing the same thing. And he's like, yeah, all I could find was a 1070. Mm hmm. Or 2070, sorry. I mean, it's a good time, but it's a bad time. It's good because prices are low and stuff's great, but you can't find anything. So, and the stuff you can, it's marked up. And the stuff you can, it's marked up. 
there's there's people selling 20 series cards for just as expensive if not more expensive than the 30 series there's probably gonna be people gonna be selling 5700 series cards the same as 6800 series cards it's it's just a really bad time because you can't find anything and you if you're building a pc you don't want to wait like months and months just to get something and even on the cpu side like uh ryzen 5000 series cpus one of my buddies he ordered the 5950x and he got he just got an email today that he said he won't get it till january Ugh. i already paid for it like <laughs> that's not a good feeling yeah so it's just this this supply thing is really bad for people who want to build new pcs it makes them like i said my buddy bought a 2070 when he wanted a 3080 because it's all that he could buy it's all that was available at the time um and and who wants that card at the same price when you can get i mean the just the performance difference i mean it you just feel bad yeah. right it's and have price i don't even know that prices have dropped on the 20 series have they not a lot not if enough. you can find yeah not, not a lot and if you can find them okay. um so that's that's the problem with this again I don't know how I can't imagine that this is like AMD's fault and I can't imagine that it's Nvidia's fault. They, I'm I'm sure they want as many cards out there as they can produce, but there's just certain things that are holding up the production of these cards whether it's availability availability of GDDR6, whether it's like, you know, lockdowns or supply, whether it's any of those any of those things could be what the deal is yep. but it's just sad like i said i mean i have i have a bunch of friends who want to build pcs and i just i just tell them like wait till january or february <laughs> like you know <laughs> and now's the time you want to because if people even if they're working from home a lot of people do get like that last two weeks of the year off right yeah um, through yeah, the like, holidays got two weeks to build yeah. and play some games yeah nope. and like you know you don't want to get it well get, you might not even be able to have family gatherings, but you do. You don't want to hang out with the in-laws. You want to be on your computer gaming. <laughs> like, you know yeah. what I mean? So it's uh, it's just a bad time. I'm sure everybody knows. Uh, it's it's just... And with all this awesome hardware, because again, both on NVIDIA and AMD side, the cards are awesome. Ryzen 5000 series is absolutely awesome. All the new cases, uh, just like we talked about the MeshFi, all this stuff is so great, but it's just that you can't, build a complete system right now like a re like reasonably is yeah. yeah it's just not a lot of fun let's uh, talk about another card that you probably won't be able to get at launch yeah um so i i know again i i do say that i called this like a month ago or however yeah, long you did I, I called this um it nvidia will be uh launching an rtx 3080 ti uh in january it'll be a thousand dollars and as i said from Six ninety nine to what thirteen ninety nine or fourteen ninety nine? Too That's big of a gap there. Like, way too big of a gap for Nvidia. Yeah. Um, so a thirty eighty Ti will sit in the middle. Um, it's interesting because the card will have the same uh, ten thousand four hundred ninety six CUDA cores as the RTX thirty ninety. At least according to this. Again, this is just like this is not official. Um, it will have the again the same uh 10,496 CUDA cores is a 3090 but it will only have 20 gigabytes of VRAM compared to the 24 uh and that's GDDR6X so this is ultimately a response to the 6900 XT that will be launching December 8 I believe from AMD uh which targets the 3090 uh so yeah I I, I don't know. I, I think you're basically getting a 3090 with less VRAM. It's mm -hmm. it's not all the... And we already said that 24 gigs was like seemed excessive anyhow. Yeah, because as I said in my review, it's a Titan. It should be called a Titan. Mm -hmm. It's... you. There's no game, even at 8K, I guess, that would use that much. Um, so... This does make sense, as I said. NVIDIA put way too much space between those two products. As again, because it's a Titan, there should be that massive space. But right, yeah, it's just weird. I I would have liked a different GPU. 
like a different, you know, the having the same cores as the 3090. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Um, and then if you bought a 3090 or could get one now, you know, you paid five hundred dollars for what? For four, four gigs gig, of four, four, four gigabytes of GDR6. I mean, come on, you have to feel kind of ripped. Yeah. <laughs> uh it's yeah so that's yeah we'll see again this is this is uh pretty much in stone but again it's not like official from nvidia so keep that in mind also uh new leaks from an rtx 3060 ti which again i don't know why they're launching a ti version first because this is what nvidia does um but uh this graph was leaked uh from video cards and it shows uh, it compared to a 2060 Super uh, and a 2080 Super um, in the difference. And you can see that it outperforms the 2080 Super, which is pretty crazy. Pretty, for a, That's 60 yeah. series. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's, again, I, I love that we have these cards that are very affordable. The 3070, very affordable. Even 3080, again, very mm-hmm. affordable. Uh, but you can't get them. That's the sad part. But seeing this is very. Uh, and this will be what a four hundred dollar card. We're expecting, I think. Uh, I think that's I what I had seen. Yeah, it's going to be around that price. I mean, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. How much was a twenty eighty super? <laughs> a lot more than that. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's that's crazy. Yeah, priced under five hundred bucks uh, for this. So I mean, just to see that, and it, it exceeds or matches like Gears of War five. It like matches almost. Um, but yeah, that's, that's going to be pretty awesome. I wonder how small it's going to be. I think it'd probably be the same size as the 3070 I'm guessing. Yeah. Um, which is a pretty small card. So I, I, I like it. Um, yeah, that's exciting. Um, Very. but again, we'll see how many are available. How many is there? And, yeah. And when you can buy them. So that's, that's the biggest thing. Um, also talking about graphics cards. So Galax or galaxy, however you want to, uh, cause they're called different things in different countries. Um, but we know them for their hall of fame cards, the all white cards, which I'm a huge fan of, which I can never get because you can't buy them in the United States. Yeah. Um, they came out with this new series. Uh, they're coming out, you know, a lot of companies do this. Like we have, uh, ROG and then there was ROG Strix and there's all these different, uh, mm-hmm. series of cards. Their new series is going to be called work the frames, <laughs> okay. which I don't know if that's just like bad English because again, they're a foreign company. <laughs> It could but be. the only reason I think they called it that is so they could call the cards WTF. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, I mean, that's like uh, a BFG card, right? Yeah. Like BFG, you know. Yeah. So I think that's the reason. So this this whole series of cards uh, looks to be just like their RGB'd out card. We've seen that a lot. Um, you can see the front. There's RGB lighting all over it. Triple fan cooling solution. On the back, you have RGBs, uh, GeForce, and this will be for the RTX 30 series. And even on the side here, you'll have some RGB lighting. Um, I, I'm i an RGB person, so I, I like it. Just like this, see where it says work the frames up here? That just looks yeah, nice. It's kind of cheesy. Yeah. Um, I would rather it just say WTF, honestly, uh, than work the frames. But I, I that's my only thing, is that I honestly think that they named it this so they could call it Just a WTF because the, yeah. they call their hall of fame HOF HOF. Yep. yep. Yeah. So WTF, what kind of cards you get today? Oh, I got the WTF uh, WTF mate. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and old man said in the chat, the, uh, only 20 gigs of VRAM. I bet there are a lot of systems that don't have 20 gigs of Ram. Exactly. <laughs> Which is true. Right. Like, yeah, I think 16 is is very much the standard. standard right now. I think yeah. we'll eventually move to 32 as the standard, but yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of people don't have 20 gigs. 64 of RAM. gang. I have 64. Yeah. I, yeah. So, so yeah. Um, what else we have for news? Uh, so this is this was also announced uh, last week when, when we did our interview with Shannon, um, which as a storage person, I'm a fan of. I don't know this how you feel cool. about this. Uh, so yeah, no, I think it's cool. High Point announced their SSD 7540, which is an eight port M.2 NVMe SSD RAID card. So if you're like me and you run all NVMe, NVMe storage, you want to add more and add more because it's super fast. And what you don't want it, SATA, you don't want any of that slow stuff. <laughs> um, so this card 
Um, as you can see, it has fans on it because you're. And that cracks me up because those things look so tiny on there, but they got to keep them thin and. Yeah. yeah. Um, you can see that you could run up to eight uh, eight drives. You have your PLX chip here. Um, and what's cool is they offer it in Gen 3 and Gen 4 versions. Um, so you can run, again, that's just so much storage. I just like want one of these. Well, it's not um, even the, you know, obviously capacity, but then, you know, they're showing a, essentially a RAID 10 mm -hmm. um, configuration there with like, <laughs> just stupid fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be all right. Yeah, that's like a good investment for my editing rig, wouldn't you say? I don't know. I mean... <laughs> sure you think about it so they have the prices here um the gen 4 version um is a thousand dollars holy cow um, then they have a gen 4 with eight u.2 ports uh which is also a thousand dollars oh they're all gen 4 oh and then they have one that only has four m.2 ports which is 600 bucks wow it's just cool though. That's I more expensive. It. I didn't I didn't need pay attention to the price of it. It's more expensive than I thought it would be. Yeah. It does require uh what is yeah, this? Yeah, what a six pin it looked like. Yeah, six pin power. I'm a fan of it though. It'd be yeah, cool. Get, I guess you would need extra it's power good. because well, it's only 75 watts, and then you have all the drives plus the PL plus, plus your controller the, and yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. a fan of it though. I need to. That is, that is like these products like this are great for like editing. But it's got a green PCB, so yeah, but it's gonna be covered. Know, you know, like oh, yeah, I still see uh, that green. Yeah. Well, again, this isn't like for consumers. Uh, yeah, yeah, like yeah. I'm saying, I need this, but this is not for consumers at all. No. <laughs> this is yeah, but it, it's a it's really cool. So if you guys want to check that out, uh, yeah, a thousand bucks for the for the eight. I'll take one. two. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, last week, um, there was a story about Battlefield. I know a lot of you guys are gamers. Um, I used to play Battlefield a lot, but I just didn't. I, I did play the uh, the, the campaign. You played Star Wars, too, didn't you? A little bit? Yeah, yeah. I played Star Wars Battlefront. Or Battlefront, yep. Yeah. Um, but Battlefield 6 uh, has been confirmed. Uh, and it's confirmed for holiday 2021. Um we do not know the premise of the game. We do not know the time period of the game. We that would picture assume looks pretty modern. This is I a think. fan. This is fan art. So this is oh, not okay. Never this mind. This is not the. Uh, this is not official. Um, so they they just EA just confirmed that they're working on the next chapter of the Battlefield franchise and that it will be called Battlefield Six. Um, as I said, this is fan art, so we don't know the time period. Um, I did like that they went back, obviously, for the a lot of the Battlefield games too. Mm -hmm. um, we'll have to see. We because this is EA, we would expect to be an esports element or a battle royale element to the game. That's just kind of a given. Um, but I would ex I would hope that they would have a nice campaign as well. Oh, I'm sure they have been good in my opinion. Um, so, yeah. So, we'll, we'll, like I said, we'll see. Uh, so, that would be this time next year. So, it's a lot of time. And obviously, we've seen with Cyberpunk and other games, uh, things get delayed. So, we'll obviously keep you guys updated if that is the case uh, with this game. But it will be interesting to see, too, because Battlefield Five was one of the first games to use real-time ray tracing and DLSS. Um, yeah, so I think that's what they showed off those technologies at CES yeah. was with battlefield five. Yeah. So battlefield was like one of the first games to do oh. it. It'll be interesting to see if battlefield six has some type of new tech in it as well. I would say that's a year from now. We will have some new, probably some new Nvidia cards mm -hmm. by then. Um, and not probably possibly new AMD cards by then. So we could see these, you know, some type of new tech, which is always interesting to see as well. So, so yeah, that's uh, that is exciting, and uh, we're coming to the end where we talk about what we have coming up next week. Um, I will be reviewing a graphics card. Uh, I'll be taking a look at the uh, Founders Edition of the RTX 3070. So uh, one of my good friends is letting me borrow his card uh, to review because you can't buy these hardly anywhere, um, and it is a nice little card. Um, I've been testing it over the past couple of days. It's actually 
in the test system behind me. Um, it is a very nice little card. I'm actually surprised at how small it is. And this is the first time that I've taken a look at a Founders Edition card in a while. And it just, it's like, it feels very quality, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, to me, it's its like the equivalent of like an iPhone, right? Like it's just that yeah. solid, like very well built, well thought out precision. You know, all the fitting is nice, right? Um, yeah, that's that's kind of how I feel about the Founders Edition cards, right? Same thing with like a car or something. You're like the fit and finish on the inside of a Mercedes or something else is a lot different than the inside of a Chevy, yeah. right? Like, and a lot of the times I don't get to see that because we get aftermarket cards, which a lot of them are good, but they just yeah, it's mm -hmm. just a completely different feel. And I really like that. I what was that? Did Nvidia start that with the 10 series? The Founders Edition cards. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and they actually like because you could get like a reference card like for years, but it was just like a junk thing, and nobody really ever. Yeah, you didn't thought, really want that one. You didn't want that one. You always wanted aftermarket. Um, but seeing this founders, you know, since they started doing that and taking the time to make it like a quality thing, like I'm pretty much sold on founders editions now because of this card. So, um, yeah, stay tuned for that. I will also be taking a look at I I. Finish all the testing, but I didn't get to finish writing the review. Is the Samsung SSD 870 QVO? Uh, that is their uh, SATA SSD that uses uh, QLC memory, um, and I'll talk about all the advantages and the, some of the disadvantages of that. So definitely uh, stay tuned for that as well. Cool. And uh, we talk about uh, any cool tech-related things you've done this week. Anything? Anything you uh, rewatched uh, the first season of The Mandalorian, just finished it up last night. My son, like, I wanted to start season two, haven't started any of that yet. Um, and my son was like, Oh, I want to watch. And so I was like, All right, well, let's start on season one. So, we yeah, went through all that, enjoyed it again. It's pretty good, you know. Yeah, I uh, it's got some flaws, but it's I've, enjoyable. I've watched the first two episodes of season two, it's good mm -hmm. so far. Um, I did feel it, the second episode of season two is, I don't know. So no. it doesn't give me the same feels as the, the first episode or the first season. So I don't know, but hopefully the next episode, which I believe is out now. I'll yeah. See I think it, it just came out. Yeah. What, uh, what that is all about. Um, Other than that I, though, no, I didn't really. I'm trying to think if I've done anything I've been. Well, one, so we did. I did the video on this keyboard. Obviously, mm -hmm. I think I finally got the lighting right in this. In yeah, this. that's what you were saying. Yeah, it only took me six months to like figure it out. But I think I have like my two different types of sets. Like if I have a smaller product, I shoot it one way. If I have like a case, I shoot it another way. I think I have everything like pretty good. But I also I just bought some stuff to do a different audio setup. I'm going to test it uh, with the next video. Hopefully, we'll see what that comes out like. Old man uh, says Elite Dangerous is free on Epic Games tomorrow. Oh, so, I, I feel like I have Elite Dangerous maybe on Steam. I'm going to have to look here now. Is it on their... No, it's not on their website. I'm bringing it up their website. Um, or maybe it's on my wish list. I haven't, I haven't really... Oh, yeah, it is right here. I haven't really followed any of this stuff. We used to follow it a lot. Yeah, we um, did. But yeah, Elite Dangerous. It is thirty dollars on Steam, and oh. it's on my wish list. So I will be uh, picking that up on the old Epic Store tomorrow. I think. It looks. Uh... Oh, it's like a. Oh, yeah, it's cool. space flying. Oh, graphics look good. That looks fun. Yeah, I'll have to pick it up too. I used to like always just like log in to Epic just grab them and just grab them, and like obviously I don't have time to play them. Um, but yeah, that's pretty cool. So Elite Dangerous. There's also another one that was on here. Uh, oh, this is, yeah, The World Next Door as well. So yeah, I, like I said, we haven't been following the free games on Epic. Um, but thank you, old man, for uh, pointing that out because you can never complain. I always like that people complain when there's like, oh, it's not this game. You're giving away this game. But it's like, it's free. They didn't have to give anything away. <laughs> yeah. So... So yeah, uh, check that no. out as well. Uh, I'm sure you just go like you can open the app or just like if you're logged in, you can just like click on it and then add it to your library. It's really easy to do. So, cool. uh, always forget. There's there's some new products coming out soon, which you'll you'll hear about from me. Um, 
we also have coming up probably not this week but next week um amd did send us their 5950x that's yeah 5950x and their 5800x so we'll have more 5000 series cpu reviews coming which is exciting um and probably some videos on those as well and a lot more again i'm once now that i'm like don't release those videos on the same day or like at the same time just yeah yeah um but now that i'm like i had like it's so hard to shoot video when you like you don't feel good about your setup i'm sure you've dealt mm-hmm. with that like you, all the, the lighting yeah the lighting is not right or whatever <laughs> so now that i think i have everything figured out i think i'll be able to pump out more video content so definitely uh stay tuned for that as well um we'll be jumping off here and going over to twitch because that's what we do every wednesday as we play some video games um apex legends that's what we've been playing that's what we play um but yeah we'll be over there so that's twitch.tv forward slash think computers uh, we want to thank everybody for you know hanging out with us and talking tech. Um, but yeah, we'll be back here same time next week, I assume, right? Uh, I think so, unless you change it up. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. so uh, so we'll catch everybody next week. Thanks everybody for coming out. And-